God damn, we drone on. Yeah, but it's about something that really matters. This cat cast <laughs> has been interrupted so that we can talk about one of the messiest company shutdowns Never. of all time. Uh, Capcom no, Vancouver. No. Oh, <laughs> that too! Yeah. That was this week! Capcom Vancouver just dissolved overnight! Oh shit, you're right. You're right. Capcom well, Vancouver shut down and everyone <laughs> saw it coming. Yeah, totally. So well, let but, me, before before we get into it, because it's, it's obviously a bit more like to it, but I just want to say that, like that really actually sucks for Capcom Vancouver because it's like, I know publishing and developing like it goes hand in hand, but it's like it smacks of Capcom. Just make more de- Dead Rising. Don't stop. Make you mo- should do wait, these things. Make what we tell you to make, how we tell you to make it. Why isn't it selling? You're fired. Okay, make this awful rendition of puzzle fighter yeah and you should do it like this and then it's like well these didn't sell well so like it's not cute enough (laughs) it's a little different if the fact that they own the company it's capcom vancouver for fuck's sake but it wasn't for a number of years it was blue castle games and i'm like that that's a a company working for you for a little bit but then it's like now it just became capcom and you just shut you shut that section down it's like I know Japan funding and they have very few of these companies left. Companies that are not in Japan that work for them forever. That's correct, actually. Yeah. I think it's the only one, maybe. And I'm just like... Not anymore. It's you not. cannot find any other project for them to work on. They can't port anything. They, they can do nothing. So have you got to close them down? Have, Shit. have you seen that, that, that gif of like the guy trying to sleep in his bed and then... There's a party next door and everyone's doing the Devil May Cry dance. Yeah. Oh. And the music is like, it's yeah. like, drum, like, the, like that's Capcom Vancouver and the we, neighbors over in Japan are just fucking doing the dance. Because Capcom Japan is fucking <laughs> flying right now. We just talked for 45 minutes to an hour about DMC5 details and then we forgot yeah. to put the shutdown of Capcom Vancouver on the top. And, and in that press release like, where they're like, they're man... Playing, this is acceptable losses because Monster Hunter did so well. Well, if Monster Hunter did so well, then can we not? Like, if Monster Hunter did poorly and they had no big hits, then I'll be like, oh, shit, yeah, times so, are tough. So but if here, anything, times are turning up here, for you. Here's how I feel this actually went down. Blue, uh, Blue Castle and Capcom Vancouver, Blue Castle slash Capcom Vancouver, was acquired during the westernization push that Unifune, Inafune was spearheading. Which also led to DMC Devil May Cry. Yeah. Capcom a few years ago said we're going to focus a lot harder on internal development. Yeah. In our Japanese which is studios. good. Which is a good thing. Which it did. Capcom is now riding high like it hasn't since the fucking nineties on the strength of their ultra Japanese or at super least games. very early on in the three sixty era right. where it was just Dead Rising one I mean, on, the, and... on the strength of their old IPs. Yes. Right. <laughs> Uh, like Monster yeah. Monster Hunter is about as popular as a Japanese game has pretty much ever been, so like with the way Dead Rising has been going and selling and its focus and all that shit, it is on. This is the flip side of us being super hyped about Monster Hunter and Devil May Cry and all these classic Japanese Capcom things. Is Capcom going? Oh, look how much money the Japanese studios are making, just doing what we've always done. Why do we even really? Why did we even acquire this Western studio? Oh, because Inafune told us to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Strider wasn't a mistake. Wasn't? Was not. That's... No, no, it was one of the very few of like the last, you know, what, what, five years ago now. Yeah, almost where I was like, wow, that came out really. Some well. of those Western projects panned out. But, yeah, uh, a bunch of them. But didn't. it's like I was sick of Dead Rising at Dead Rising Three. I was sick and of it's... Dead Rising at Dead Rising Two. Because Dead Rising Two yeah. didn't live up to the promise of. Case zero. Case zero. But Dead Rising 2 is still a success and fun yeah, and whatever. It's still fun. But it's like, whose decision was it to make an Xbox One exclusive? Not Blue Castle. Very likely not. Who's the, whose decision was to make a Dead Rising 4 an Xbox exclusive, timed exclusive and like recast the actor that played Frank? Probably not Blue Castle. I'm just saying what I assume. But I mean, like, who makes a decision? Like, if you're a developer, you kind of want to... Well, keep your ear low to what the fans are saying. If they want Frank back, cool. Put Frank in there. That's cool. Um, but it's like, let's not take his voice actor and let's make him very different. I mean, that game was almost a reboot. It was so close to being a reboot. Did you ever even play it before? No. It was like 
they they, they mentioned bother. Dead Rising One as this mythical thing that may or may not have barely happened, and it's like, no, nah, Frank is doing this now and that, and like it's so far removed from the first one, and they tried to fix it all with DLC to put the time limits back in. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, Lost Planet was always Japanese, right? All of those games. Nope. Nope. Not the third one. First one was flawed but fun. Second game was really flawed but fun. And both those were made by Japanese developers. Spin-off game was super Japanese. And then the Lost yeah. Planet 3 was a trash fire made by a Western studio. Yeah. Who made it? I don't even I don't remember. even remember their name. I remember name. me and Matt, we played it at E3, and we got a piece of footage of me just staring at it because it was so fucking ass. And all it was was like a weird first-person segment. Spark Unlimited! Oh my god! Legendary The Box! Yeah. <laughs> Shoot your griffins. I think your chat thinks I died again. <laughs> well, unless you know Yaiba. stuff about Legendary. They made Yaiba! They made oh Ninja God. Gaiden Z Yaiba. Uh, don't die, Tirzu. Right. I, I'm really sorry if we anyone if anyone is that used to work at Spark Unlimited, like because they died in 26, 2015, but I'm sorry. I'm looking at your list of games. You're, you are jobbers. Yeah. Call of Duty fucking finest hour, Turning Point, Fall of Liberty. Those games Game are, development is hard, I know, those but like, games that's are not a great list of games. You know what? I bet they never got the time and money they needed. And the, the, fact for, that, for the fact that those games came out bad. Lost Planet 3 and Ninja Gaiden Z, yeah, probably. I My brain the best game is Lost Planet 3. forgot no, about Planet the Star. existence of Yaiba. That trailer had some cool shit in it, though. Liam and I got hype over I remember. I remember getting hyped for some cool shit. But yeah, um, Capcom Vancouver is gone. Sorry, guys. Um, yep. All right. So Luckily, hey, guys, luckily, there's plenty of open jobs in the game industry right now, and there's no other big closures to take those spots. Yeah. Man, Stranger Things was about to get a game. It was. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Child Wolf Death. Among Us was about to get another game. <laughs> Telltale was making a Stranger Things game. Um, they were also making a Marvel game, I think. But all that's shut down because what? Telltale's canceled, and oh. it sucks. Uh, Zoo, have you played uh, Telltale games? I haven't played any of the Telltale games, but I've watched them, and they look really fun. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Well, that, uh, <laughs> that's appropriate, I suppose. Yeah, because yeah. that was part of the news, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. None of the Telltale games made any money except for Walking Dead. And yeah, Disney. that's what I heard. And uh, there was another one. Um, uh, Minecraft. 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 The diminishing mm -hmm. returns graph on every new on every new game was hugely low. Oh, man. Uh, I, it's it didn't shocking sell for bigly. The, it's shocking <laughs> for The Walking Dead Season 2. I would have thought that um, must have... And what came up it, in a couple of these articles was that apparently the uh, the fact that people were watching along Let's Plays since they're very cinematic experiences right. meant that they didn't purchase the game instead see, to see the variants on their own. The yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I, I would like to actually put that issue up, and not just because it's covering our own asses, we'd uh -huh. be potentially responsible, uh -huh. but Until Dawn did not have that problem. It didn't. Yeah. And it Until didn't. Dawn didn't have that problem because I view this as a design problem. Life is Strange didn't have that problem. Life is Strange sold 3 million Huge copies. First of a new thing, though. Right? Yeah. But, the, but the, every Telltale game is need, technically the first of a new thing. You're right. But like the more accurate comparison would be like an Until Dawn 2 or 3 and a, here's uh, a Life thing. is Strange 2 and 3 the, and the, Captain the, Awesome. The way that I but see that's this just sequels in general, is a almost. design problem in that um, Jim puts a video out today about Telltale's death. And I think we can all agree that we all started to really see through the formula real bad. Like, the formula became, like, naked and bare to us after a while. Because the writers left. No, not just because of that. Because of the design. The design of having it episodic and the design of having everything have to dovetail it back into itself meant mm -hmm. and that... The, and the design of having three fran different franchises per year that are like, always like, coming like, out. Let's, let's, yeah, yeah, yes, but, but I do think that's the writing because Tales of the Borderlands didn't have that problem. Sure. Right? But, but, let, 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 me get, let me finish my point Sure, here. sorry. You can compare, for all their faults, all the David Cage games, 
uh, Life is Strange, Until Dawn, and even that council game, that weird council game you guys played. Yeah, well, we right? don't know how that's selling. That, that's not but even yeah, point. Yeah. But they all have their formula, but their formula isn't so obvious to the player as they are doing it that it, it you don't feel the need to go through it again. So Heavy Rain... When I first did it, I went through it again immediately to see what could change. And it turns out, not as much as you would think. Because, mm-hmm. But the illusion was there, right? For Until Dawn, there is actually no illusion. There is actually a lot of shit you can change in that game. David, D- David Cage says, don't, don't play my right. games twice. Well, he's, he clearly changed his mind for Detroit. Because Detroit is wildly variable. And, has, and we know that. We did two LPs of it, and they turned out totally different. Yeah. But, the, right? but, the, but the meme, your choices don't matter, right. is a telltale It is a telltale statement. problem. Yeah. And, it, and I'm going to put that on two things. One, just design issues. They, just, they couldn't figure the way through. And because they were so overworked... By their shitty company, they had to just bang these out. And the second thing is the episodic format means that everything has to kind of get to where it needs to be by the end of the episode. It also it gives them an opportunity to make money faster on these on these releases, which is something that works out when it's doing when it's doing big numbers right it, off it the works bat. Out right? when it makes money right off when episode one does really well. But um, what we saw in the closure was a, a lot of news came out, a lot of a lot of messy things, a lot Very of really but, a, absurdly but, bad news. But things that we've been complaining about for years now have an explanation for them, such as um, why are you sticking with the Telltale tool when it's clearly technically a problem? All kinds of bugs happening constantly over the course of multiple games that, and they're big, they're bad problems that don't get fixed. Why? And it's because they were in a state of crunch for years. For the pretty much Extended. the entire collective memory of us as of the company, they've been in crunch. Now, I wanted to say, like me and Wooly, I think there might be like an episode or two left of uh, the last session of Tales of the Borderlands that we did. And we hadn't the news hadn't broken out when we recorded it, and I had said during it that like maybe now from this point on, like maybe two three weeks ago, the CEO or a head guy at Telltale made a, a quote saying, "Yeah, you know what? We really kind of overdid it. Like about a year or two ago, we were releasing way too much stuff, and we were in a rut. And quality went down. And quality went down, and yep. we're, and he goes, we're back on the road. Yeah." Or something like that to recovery. Like, and guess whatever. what? For the final season of Walking Dead, I had only heard good things. But that statement I was know. contingent on this final season making some money. Well, and, and, and I, the I, second one wasn't going to do it. It's not going to be this one. Plus, there was that weird other one that we did. Yeah. There are multiple weird other ones that we um, did. Yeah, Wait, forget. no. There's three seasons, and this final season is the fourth one. There's more. Than that. Then there's ones we didn't even touch. There is Walking Dead Season 1. There's Walking Dead 400 Days. Yeah, then there's the... Then there's Walking Dead Season 2. Then there's Walking Dead A New Frontier, which is Season 3. three. Then there's the, the, the final The final season is Season 4, but there's also the Michonne side Michonne, arc. Yes. Yeah, which we didn't touch. Yeah. Yeah, we never bought it. it has I wonder if this has anything to do with, like, uh, the fact that the actual TV show Walking Dead has... Really taking a tumble as well. I might. Yeah, they really they're, might. They're trying a percentage for sure. I don't know how much. And, yeah. and and not to mention that AMC just came out with their "We want Walking Dead to live forever." We're going to create more series and spinoffs. Fucking insane. But uh, in a in a short rundown of all the bullshit that the the folks who worked at te- so we we need to really make a distinction to those at home to make sure that it's clear what we're talking about when we talk about Telltale sucks or whatever we're i personally am talking about the company and the way that it was run not the vast majority of the developers and the employees yeah because those people people. got fucked by the company they worked for right because it went bankrupt the layoffs are not eligible for employment insurance of any kind Uh, and so a a bunch of them because uh they were technically contractors uh so nobody got severance either and uh, people had relocated their lives to the place up until like Matt, you said like five days ago, the, uh, like a week. Like Someone I just, knew that they just hired a couple more people, like within this month. That moved across and one country. of them moved cross country, and yeah. a bunch of them found out that they were fired from the article reporting on the shutdown of the company. Which this is. Sadly, a thing that always happens. It's becoming the norm, and will continue to happen because the employee firing security thing is always one of like. We we need to like basically last minute give this news to people yeah. so that they can uh, uh, not have to worry about 
reactions beforehand while the I, company's still I, running. I saw somebody talking about it's the this. escort out of the office. Uh, I I think it might have been Alpha Gamble, but I'm not sure. He might have just retweeted it, or maybe my memory's wrong. But it was somebody talking about how they were used to be in dev, and they once learned that their team was getting fired because the building manager was showing around guys in suits through their office saying, yeah, this spot's going to be free in about three months. There you go. And everybody in dev just poked their heads up and went, F fucking what? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, look, we have the sales numbers of, or the Steam numbers, which yeah. isn't the most accurate in the uh, world, but it's what so, you have. And it's also the timeline for all the things they put out, right? Because here's the thing, right? Some people, like, it's easy to forget some of the in-between releases here, but... Like, there was a point where when Game of Thrones and, like, Guardians of the Galaxy were coming out and such, well, I, I can't say Guardians of the Galaxy because I haven't touched it, but Game of Thrones, we, we did the whole thing. That's a huge-ass name from a huge-ass, like, series, but in the end, it wasn't really memorable. It didn't do a whole lot. Because it couldn't. Because it was stuck in the formula. And, and stuck in a franchise where you can't just kill but how are you supposed to emulate? Characters. How are you supposed to innovate on the formula when you're in you're working 16-hour days for a year? Yeah. So we're seeing this chart here uh, so that you can, like, you can just... Let, hold on. Yeah, sorry. Visual on a podcast. If you, uh, if you just do a Google search for Telltale Game Sales and go to Images... It's the first result. Yeah, is uh, the, the 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 chart. The Steam sales. It's between 2010 and 2017. In that seven years, they released 14 games. That's, okay, that's impressive. 2010 sure. was Back to the Future, the game, uh, just over half a million copies. Uh, and then, like, we're not talking about like playing, or just just oh, just in terms of purchases. Jurassic Park, the game, uh, less than half of that for 2011. Then the next year was The Walking Dead season one. That shoots them up to uh, over 3.5 million. The right. Walking Dead's the hottest shit ever at that in that year. Yeah, and it's right. an original story, right? It's not the exact TV no, show thing, right? They're doing the no. Thing. It wasn't even connected to the TV show. Yeah, yeah. except for the the the, uh, the Asian guy. I forgot his name. Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. And he was only there in one for episode. for one thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, then Wolf Among Us comes along and is one third or less of Walking Dead. Walking Dead season two is less than half of Walking Dead. Then Tales from the Borderlands is even less than Wolf Among Us. Game of Thrones is less than that. Minecraft Pause. is... What's that? Sorry. So because so all those things you just listed, yeah. that was two years. Yeah. So yeah. we were saying a game a year up until that point, yeah. but then it was Wolf Among Us 2013, Walking Dead Season 2 2013, Tales from the Borderlands 2014, Game yeah. of Thrones 2014, doubling it up. But, like, yeah, you get Game of Thrones, then, then you get Minecraft Story, which is half of Game of Thrones. Half of that. Then Walking Dead Michonne, which is the same... Batman, which is the same. Walking Dead, A New Frontier, which is the same. And that's three games in one year. That are, we're talking like one-tenth the sales of Walking Dead Season 1? Uh, under a quarter million. Right? Then you hit Guardians of the Galaxy and Minecraft Season 2 and Batman Enemy Within, which whose graphs are so small they barely are visible on this chart we're looking at. I want to say it just as They're a like 20,000 sales? What is that? Like... Yeah, that's that's not a hundred. Yeah, as a personal thing, it really sucks that Batman season two is like that low because it was the best one up until I had played Borderlands. I'm like, this is the the, the best <laughs> uh, Batman uh, Telltale game I've played in quite a while because it was pretty different and fun and interesting, and whatever. And it but took I mean, some looking at this story risks, but looking at this chart and you're running this business, it's a free fall. This is not a sustainable business model. It is. This is absolutely. You're, you're working off the Walking Dead season one money until the money until runs it runs out. until it runs yeah. out. Yeah, like it hoping. makes total sense why this company went under. It it's not. That crap. So that yeah, but no one knew. So so somebody like let's you could feel now. it. You could feel let's it. Let's go back in time to Walking Dead season two, and it's less than half the result of Walking Dead season one, right? The company's decision at the high end was okay. If they're going to sell this much, we have to double down and make tons and tons and tons of games to make up for the shortfall. When in fact, what they should have done was the opposite. And focus on making Walking bangers. Down. But here's the problem. Yeah. Banger doesn't work out. You're done. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's really true. Well, yeah. this didn't work out either. Of course. Yeah. But it's hedging. Hindsight, your, yeah. It, you know what I mean? You you bet on multiple numbers on the roulette table or you throw the, it all only, on double the zero. The only real thing that I have to say to that is that it's still not a good correlation, but the games business is the only business in which quality and sales are positively correlated. There is zero correlation between sales and quality in movies, in film, uh, uh, movies, uh, plays, and fucking books and all they, that shit. 
It's only in games that good reviews correspond with good sales. Now that doesn't mean something that reviews well will sell. And it doesn't mean that something that reviews bad won't sell well. But it means that your best indicator to actually sell your game is to make a good one. And that's unique to the games business. You mean that's your best shot? Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's the one thing you can control mm -hmm. is how yeah. good your game is. I'm thinking about that. And yeah. I because I've never heard that before. There were a couple studies. And I'm thinking that came of other mediums. Ago. I'm thinking of other mediums as well. And word of mouth is always word of mouth. But it's also I guess the reason why that works is because like games are the most um consumer like the consumers are the most conscientious of their purchases mm. compared to other mediums. I feel like like yeah, uh, I, I'd agree with that. Because the commitment yeah. is high. Right, it's it's one of the most expensive hobbies you can have. Like it's more expensive than say going to a movie once a month, mm -hmm. you know. So it's more expensive yeah. than buying a book, or or whatever. It's so ninety dollars. Ninety dollars, or in some cases, one hundred and forty dollars. At, 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 at whatever frequency you <laughs> yeah. consume the content. Yeah, which is like very like varied across like yeah. anything. Yeah. L looking at this graph, it's like there was a three year gap between one Walking Dead season between two and three, and it's like. I mean, looking at this now in hindsight, it's twenty twenty. But I'd assume it's like focus on the Walking Dead ended at season three. See how that goes, and then maybe make decisions based on all these crazy franchises. But it's like I'm sure tons of people were knocking at their door, saying, "Make a game for us! Make a game for us!" And it's hard when Marvel or DC or fucking yeah. Game of Thrones dude, is knocking on your goddamn like door. Like this, dude. Like uh, there's a million. We can Sharon Gan yeah. the, the past as much as you want. Like there's a million ways to go. Like they should have. They should have. But at, that's why I said hindsight. Is yeah, it, it, you know. You're, but when you look at this, it's like. Well, here's the other thing. Because I've never seen this graph before, and it just some visualized these, it in my head. Like, whoa, what a fucked up thing! Some I of never these, realized it. it was some of bad. these names are so big, yeah, that you really wouldn't have guessed they'd be under, uh, like less than half of what Walking Dead season should have released the, more Home Star the, Runner uh, games. Uh, <laughs> That's that would have saved them. Is that you pointed out that if that banger doesn't do, do well, then the company's <coughs> done under. So maybe you do make a ton of games. The other problem is that running your workforce ragged for like five years isn't a good way to make things in this kind of business. And and just when for those... When you're running like a fucking coal yeah, mine of or course, some shit, of course. just work well, I feel like that's kind of again. industry standard from what I've heard. Is that yeah, it is. Of, it's is. fucked up. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're completely right. Here. It's a shame they didn't it have It sucks like that a, that's such a common thing that you hear about too, it, you know? It's a shame they didn't have like a two-studio setup like how Call of Duty and, and, and Assassin's Creed still manages... To like you know squeak out through because like yeah. someone has a year off or whatever. The, um, the game's but this business is only the one is, studio. Now, is one that assumes that there's going to be a fresh batch of new recruits out of university that are itching to make games for low pay, so yeah. you can burn out your core team. I'm I'm squinting an eye here and like eyeballing it, but it looks like the collective sales of every other game combined combined is less than Probably, Walking Dead season one. I would one. believe that. If not. Like it's just close, around the close. same level, it looks like to, the collective sales did not reach 3.5 mil at any point. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm getting an alert here that apparently uh, Clementine's voice actress didn't know until the day either, yeah. despite being asked to record lines. Oh, yeah, and here's I, I where her, we wow. get to I read the, her tweets about it. And was sad. Here's where we get to the final, even best part. Um, those of you who uh, bought the the season pass for The Walking Dead final season, your money's probably gone because it's going to be really hard to get it back from a company that doesn't exist. Now, granted, They're on a skeleton crew of 25 people to continue their obligations is what the now, uh, Which say. is Minecraft. Yeah. Granted, looking at these charts, not a lot of you probably bought the season pass, but certainly some people did. I um, wasn't buying also, it. Also, the se season, uh, the final season of Walking Dead, will have its second episode. It will release. Yeah. And it, I am fascinated by how that game is actually going to end. If they're going to last second change it to, it'll then, be incomplete. It'll just be incomplete. That is the most depressing thing in the world. It is really sucky. Yeah, it's but. not like they're going to have an ending stinger, and then it'll have a black screen that says Clementine died on her way back to her home. No, planet. no, no. no. <laughs> I, I'm expecting like a little post credit scene like the Sandlot or something. Yeah. Like this is what happened to all the characters. To, be, to, be, to be perfectly honest, I'm expecting uh, uh, an art book and/or a comic 
Ooh, comic. To yeah. just, from uh, Skybound. To just come out and just show I, you I feel like what Kurt they already Bindle had planned. probably put something out. Yeah. But uh, I feel like you're just going to get a book. At the same time, like, I, I when I mean how it ends, I mean, like, literally the last thing. The last thing, thing yeah. Because it it's obviously not going to fucking end with a trailer for the episode that won't exist. Right. Right? So what is it? Is it just going to fade to black and go the end? No, seriously? So the game industry has been responding to this uh, quite largely with the hashtag Telltale Jobs. Um, a number of companies have all reached out and Poor basically Capcom, Vancouver, holy shit! Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot of a lot of uh, companies have reached out, and, and like Ubisoft had a thing saying, "Hey, if you're a former Telltale employee, come to this lunch we're having talking about jobs." And multiple other companies are like, "Yo, we're a studio, we're hiring, we're looking for talented people." Because that's 250 that's people in the California area that suddenly need work. So Do you see uh, immediately like, immediately worrying about yeah, there see are, Randy um, Pitchford. Asking for employees on Twitter. See that? No. Randy Pitchford was out there going like, Hey, everybody. Gearbox is always looking for talent. To which some intrepid... They're always looking for a hit, too. Which some intrepid Twitter user replied, Thank God Gearbox could use some fucking talent. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, yes, 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 yes. (laughs) It's like, Nice. Ah, ah, suck it, Randy. Ah. Ah, feels good. It'd be great if he hired them and he's like, um... (laughs) Gearbox sadly is now going out of business like a week later. <laughs> but it's like, and he's like, oh, I'm a magician. What well, did Randy fucking run out of publishers to steal from? Yeah, allegedly. Well, it's the, the fuck the the peep the best Borderlands product that exists is the one that tells is the one they made. No, that's not true. It's Borderlands Two, but still, that one's pretty good. I hear. I don't know. I played a lot of Borderlands Two, and I'm playing this, and this is more entertaining. The best Borderlands story that exists. Oh, story, okay. That might be the easiest trophy ever. Is the one that Telltale yeah. made. I guess if you're, yeah, if you're debating on story, I just played through the the first uh, Borderlands game, and I love the game, but there's like no story. <laughs> and then the second one has a bunch of story, and it's terrible. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, there was a there was a document that got out as well with a huge list of like here's all these companies that are hiring game dev job game dev jobs if you're looking for places to go so there was a huge reaction to this happening and did um, you, uh, i forget their name did you see the one dev who said well can't do nothing with this anymore and he's essentially putting up his shit post folder from the work of all the stupid shit oh, they did with the I engine. Oh, I saw that. Yes. Oh, I didn't see <laughs> it. It's like Lee growing a thousand feet tall and shooting laser <laughs> beams at the boats. Wow. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, but yeah, like hoping a lot of these people land on their feet. And cool to see uh, um, a supportive response from everybody because, yeah. you know, mm. yeah, management fucking just, you dropped it on everybody. That, like sure the way, to give that list like the way it always Vancouver goes. Influence. That is Ew. the kind of heartwarming and passionate response born out of the empathy of a bunch of people who have also been fucked over and lost their and jobs. Crunch and like the like the the reason why the games industry is responding so warmly and so supportively is because the game industry is fucked up. And this happens all the time. Well Matt, looks like we're out of easy go to filler games. No, we still haven't played a bunch of them. <laughs> Ah, God, fucking, no. Dude, dude, the skeleton out of the fucking grave? Dude, like, it just... The, <laughs> honestly, the fact that, the fact that, the, that like, Let's Plays even came up in the discussion really does... It stings, though. Yeah, because you're like, you know, because there's, there's so many times when it goes the opposite way and... It, the, 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 the Let's Play brings attention to the game that otherwise I, would not well, have sold well, at all. It's, it's yeah, that's not, really true. And that's what we like are hoping for like every time. Well, it's definitely not the chief reason. There were a lot of people that said, I'm not watching Fire Emblem because it looks so interesting. I'm going to get out and buy the game. I that's would, not the reason why they had such low views and nobody but, watched it. Would, but that was the most common thing people said. Like, it looks really cool and I've always wanted to play it. But, oh, I want to play it myself, so I'm not watching so, Well, the realest tweet of all time yeah. was the guy who basically came in and said, um, I'm one of those people that will immediately vote yes to you playing something on Twitter. And then, and then watch the first episode, back out and not watch the rest because I'm playing it myself. Yeah. It's like, thanks, assholes. Don't, don't, stop <laughs> answering. Stop telling us. what. Anyway, um... I would like to think 
too real that because i remember back the most overwhelming response we have ever received to this type was that when we did the yakuza 4 lp every single day that that lp was running matt and i got messages going i thought this series sucked i didn't know what it was Mm -hmm. holy shit it's so cool can i get a copy and i would like to think that that played whatever small role it did in getting people actually talking about the Yakuza series. Metal Wolf fucking Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I feel a little more personal pride for Yakuza, but you're right. It is Metal Wolf Chaos that you Come you on. Like, that's what it can do at best. Yeah. But mm-hmm. and, and the when the thing... game formula and what... It's, it's, it's not a blaming thing, but it's just like... It, when it is this exact perfect storm of this is a watchable, easily predictable game we're hoping is going to be good but has often turned out bad... People see that and go, I don't really care what the other choices were. So they, <laughs> that's what I was, there's no desire to go back th- and find out. That's what I was going to say, though, because to me, I still kind of think it's like if someone watches you play Devil May Cry, they're not going to have a radically different gameplay than you did. They're not going to see things you never saw because it's a very linear game with like, you know. Story, well, content wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Story, content wise. But it's like at least a, a Walking Dead game, even like you just said, like some people would be, I don't care about the other choices. But I'm like, to me, when, whenever we were playing one, it was like sometimes if they're a really good one, like let's say Batman was, it's like I actually kind of for Batman, like, hmm. I kind of want to see the other Joker I just, route. I want to know. And don't forget that they mm-hmm. embrace this to some degree by putting in the community voting option. Were so that like yeah. streams could actually have the whole chat voting on what options the car- the game would yeah. would, would go right. through with. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they 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 even did try to embrace that to a degree. But yeah, that Streaming that does dead cells. it does sting to see that associated. You know. Yeah. Well, this I kind mean, of reminds me of uh, what happened with the Super Smash Bros. developers. They uh, <laughs> decided not to make a uh, a story mode with mm-hmm. cutscenes and everything for. Smash no 4. Sub, no subspace emissary. Posted, yeah. Exactly. And b- because people had posted all of the cool cutscenes from subspace emissary online. And Nintendo was like, well, it's a wasted effort then because people are just getting it from there instead of actually playing it themselves. But people fucking loved so, it. Yeah, people loved that <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, people did love and it. Exactly. Melee sold really well. And Brawl, too. Yeah, Brawl sold very big. Like, Brawl mm-hmm. was like really highest, one like, of the highest like, selling fighting games. Well, the subspace ever. emissary was just the most, like, you can't top that in a way, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, and they, but they just didn't even try. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, never try. But yeah, so the the fear of used games has now become the fear of us, essentially. Right. <laughs> and then when we all die, it will be the fear of Twitch it, or it, Mixer. It'll be whatever the fear is. That's not we did a bad job marketing or making our games. It won't be the fear exactly. of YouTube gaming. <laughs> it's, it's whatever. Hell no! It won't. <laughs> no, seriously, we get it. Get it together. I forget that shit exists. I legitimately, until you said that, I forgot that you, I mentioned Mixer first because at least Mixer kind of is a thing. When when this first hit the hit like the internet and stuff i thought like just seeing little whispers i'm like oh they probably let go like a, a, a you know a, a chunk of a chunk of their workforce probably like 25 percent of it yeah and then when i saw i'm like wait, wait what i got it You're from i got closing it, down i got it from someone before it was publicly announced mm-hmm. that, that that said like yeah this has not hit the news yet but like, oh yeah uh, i saw that same guy i think yeah. he tweeted both of us and just said, and, like, yo, um, Telltale's about to shut down. I'm like, what? That's ridiculous. And I saw layoffs. And I misread it and thought it was 25 people being laid off. No, it was everyone but 25 people being laid off. I It's weirdly appropriate that we're finishing up an LP of, like, A what really I think one. is, like, one of their best. It is unquestionably their best. Um, in my opinion. Not sales-wise. I would question that. Not sales-wise. You can question my question. <laughs> 